The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem with a word of wisdom from our Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all the nations shall flow into it. When the true Christ returns at the seventh trumpet to rule the nations with a rod of iron as it's written in Revelation chapter 19, and many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And you could even say that Jacob, in the ultimate future ascents, is symbolic of all who don't take part in the first resurrection at that time, with Israel being all who are part of God's family tree at the seventh trumpet, the millennial priesthood, in other words. So Jacob must become Israel, so to speak, by washing their robes and making them white in the blood of the Lamb, which means absorbing Christ's teachings of discipline distributed by the millennial priesthood until the thousand years are finished, when Jacob can become Israel by standing against Satan at that time and taking part in the second resurrection, or they can follow Satan again and get blotted out of existence in the lake of fire. And he, meaning the true Christ, upon his return shall judge among the nations, dividing them into two groups of sheep and goats, as you can see in Matthew chapter 25, and shall rebuke many people in righteousness he doth judge and make war, as it's written in Revelation chapter 19 as well. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore, because the true Prince of Peace, as Christ is called in verse 6 of chapter 9 of this book of Isaiah, will have returned at that time, taking away the dominion of the lion, bear, and leopard of Daniel chapter 7, and destroying Daniel's fourth beast, which is exclusively supernatural, made up of Satan's role of Antichrist and his fallen angel locust army, including those ten fallen angel kings, Satan himself being locked in the bottomless pit at the seventh trumpet, as you can see in Revelation chapter 20. O house of Jacob, which again in the futurist sense is symbolic of all who aren't Israel during the thousand years, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord, absorbing Christ's teachings distributed by the Zadok as well as the other members of Christ's millennial priesthood, whereby they can become Israel also, taking part in the second resurrection and going into the eternity, which is the third world age. Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east, and are soothsayers like the Philistines, which means the migratory ones, which is the curse of Cain, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. The Nacar in the Hebrew, which means the Kenites, whose children, so to speak, are the same children most Christians will become impregnated with at 666, figuratively speaking. Woe unto them that are with child, and give suck, means woe unto those still worshiping Satan when the true Christ returns at the woe of the seventh trumpet. That's when he'll kill the children of Jezebel with death, as he says in Revelation chapter 2 in the 23rd verse. Because when all are changed into spiritual bodies, they'll know they've been deceived into worshiping Satan instead of Christ, which is what Antichrist means. And notice the east is mentioned here in Isaiah chapter 2 verse 6, is in the kings of the east written of in the sixth vial. Satan and his fallen angel locust army, that is to say, when their images are transmitted throughout the earth, causing Babylon, which means confusion, to come into being within the minds of most Christians in the apostasia, when they become the whore of Babylon and are grafted into Satan's family tree. Their land also is full of silver and gold. We already saw the Kenites in verse 6, which is what the brass in Daniel chapter 2 corresponds to, the leopard of Daniel chapter 7, that is to say. Now we see the bear and the lion with the silver and gold. Neither is there any end of their treasures in the one world religious system that comes into being at the woe of the sixth trumpet. But their land is also full of horses, neither is there any end of their chariots. And the iron in Daniel chapter 2 is symbolic of Daniel's fourth beast in the ultimate future sense. and Daniel's fourth beast is exclusively supernatural. And as you can see in Revelation chapter 9, verse 9, the sound of the wings of Satan's fallen angel locust army was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Speaking of the flying vehicles, you'll also see in Isaiah chapter 5 in the 28th verse, their land also is full of idols they worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made, along with worshiping Satan himself at 666, they'll worship the one world system also, as it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 4, symbolized by the gold, silver, brass, and iron in Daniel chapter 2, the clay there being symbolic of the fact that it'll be a combination of flesh with the lion, bear, and leopard, as well as the supernatural with Daniel's fourth beast, and the mean man boweth down, and the great man humbleth himself, therefore forgive them not, and as another other 
translation says, so people will be brought low and everyone humble do not forgive them. And as you can see pointed out in the Companion Bible, this is contrasting society's extremes, therefore forgive them not, because at the seventh trumpet it'll be too late to repent and be grafted back into God's family tree. They'll have to wait until the thousand years are finished and stand against Satan then. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust. Those who are with child and giving suck, so to speak, when the true husband returns, for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. All the tribes of the earth will mourn at the seventh trumpet, as it's written in Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. And as we'll see in Isaiah chapter 13, verse 11, at that time he'll punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity and will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible pride within himself being what caused Satan to fall in the first world age receiving the death sentence in Ezekiel 28 meaning he'll be cast into the lake of fire after the thousand years are finished along with whoever chooses to follow him again at that time and upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up and upon all the oaks of Bashan which not only connects this chapter to Ezekiel 31 which again looks back at Satan's downfall because of pride within himself to the end that none of all the trees by the waters exalt themselves for their height, but it's also a repetition of verse 9 of Isaiah chapter 2, meaning all who exalt themselves will be brought low when the true Christ returns at the seventh trumpet, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, and upon every fence wall, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures, and the loftiness, which means pride, of of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day, a day with the Lord being as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day, and the idols he shall utterly abolish, especially Satan's role of Antichrist, which is the golden calf of the end times, as well as his one world system, which includes his fallen angels, as you can see in Revelation chapter 19, verse 20, the destruction of Daniel's fourth beast, in other words, and the rest of the beast, the lion, bear, and leopard, have their dominion taken away, but their lives will be prolonged for a season and a time. The time is the thousand years, and the season is that little season in which Satan is loose from the bottomless pit that you can read of in Revelation chapter 20. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks at the seventh trumpet when the true Christ returns and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. That great earthquake written of in the seventh vial as well as the seventh trumpet, which is at the end of the half hour written of in the seventh seal. So 777, which is immediately after 666, when they'll say to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. The sixth seal covering that entire two and a half month period of the sixth trumpet and the sixth vial. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Only those who are Israel, so to speak, at that time. Meaning only those who are virgins, spiritually speaking, barren of the children that are symbolic of the deception. In other words, they'll have the seal of God in their forehead as opposed to the mark of the beast when the true husband returns. Many having been brought out of the confusion, which is what Babylon means by what the Holy Spirit will say through those who are delivered up during the sixth trumpet. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and idols of gold, which they made, each one for himself, to worship to the moles and to the bats. The deception having been transmitted through underground cables and the airwaves into the foreheads of those who were part of the bear as well as the lion, which correspond to the silver and the gold on the image of Daniel 2. The brass being left out because it's through the four hidden dynasties of the Kenites, the Nacar in verse 6, that the seeds of deception were planted, causing most Christians at 666 to become the Zer in the apostasia, being impregnated in their forehead with the deception that Satan is Jesus. But then upon realizing they'd been deceived, when all are changed into spiritual bodies, when the true Jesus returns, they'll go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. An earthquake at the seventh vial such as was not since men were upon the earth. As you can see in Revelation chapter 16 verse 18, see she from man whose breath is in his nostrils for wherein is he to be accounted of. All flesh will be destroyed when the true Christ returns and all will be changed into spiritual bodies. And at that moment they'll either be Jacob, which means in a spiritual body but without an eternal soul, or Israel, meaning they'll be in a spiritual body.
body having taken part in the first resurrection, on such the second death in the lake of fire hath no power, meaning they're going into the eternity after the thousand years are finished, along with all who wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb, making them white, taking part in the second resurrection, becoming Israel also, because as you can see in Isaiah chapter 49, Christ himself is Israel, and in marriage to become one, Abraham's seed being all who are heirs according to the promise, and the promised land is ultimately the third world age.